At Purpose Lab, experimentation and conversations are a key part of how we learn and innovate. Join us for a conversation about what works, what doesn't, and how today's decisions are shaping tomorrow's financial ecosystem. Welcome to Agents in Action. So today's guest is someone who spent the last two decades at the cutting edge of high-performance computing and AI infrastructure in Asia. So Sin, as he's known, leads the AI and HPC at Lenovo Asia Pacific. From building IBM's HPC teams and to leading Lenovo's GPU as a service model, Sin has helped to scale AI for everything from genomics to cancer research to climate innovation. And what sets Sin apart isn't just his deep tech expertise, but his ability to turn compute power into real-world outcomes like faster cures, greener data, and smarter enterprises. Well, thank you for welcoming me today. Shall we dive in? Let's go. So let's start with the industry perspective, Sin. When we see financial institutions as they continue their adoption journey, how do infrastructure providers like Lenovo help them accelerate that journey? If I'm a client today, a bank, um, BFSI industry, I'll be looking for a vendor that has that breadth, that depth. So consulting services, other things, and that global reach. A bank doesn't just reside here. A bank has branches everywhere. So being able to support them everywhere that they do business is everywhere we do business. And what innovations are you seeing in the space, Sin? Especially in the context of agentic architecture. When you look at agentic, um, Lenovo has a, so we actually eat our own cooking. It's, it's, it's one of the things that I think looking at a vendor that utilizes their own technology in their own processes. So we have technology that we use developed with SSG um, and it's an agentic platform. It allows you as a client to be able to take this already pre-built agentic model, effectively rag it, which is modify the data streams and for, for your own enterprise as an example, put that into a testing environment very, very quickly. Um, we have a facility within SSG where we'll commit to and guarantee 90 day turnaround. So from zero to 90 days to allow you to be up in a POC in a testing environment. So imagine if you will, an agentic platform focused on uh, IT help desk. Maybe it's focused on a specific set of clients who are working in highly risky trading of some description, but being able to build an agentic model that can interact with them. In, in fairly rapid time. That's one of the most exciting things that I can see, this, this near thinking LLM that's coming down the line. I love it. And, and it really is that agentic architecture has opened up a new way of looking at performance scale and optimization for customers. And it's just opened up the conversation in ways that we didn't have before, which is pretty brilliant. So I was just wondering when these financial services institutions, they deploy intelligence at the edge rather than centralized data centers. What are some of the benefits that they have? I'm a believer in the edge because I feel like it just opens up the conversation in a whole different way. It's this endpoint. But one of the things that um, we're very focused on is data. Data has to live somewhere. That's, that's number one. Data is the blood of any AI infrastructure. Our hybrid AI approach, which is, a, again, a, a huge focus with Lenovo today, is really focused on where the data is. Action the data where it's effectively generated. And that's important. And today we've got devices that's generating data. Some refrigerators actually generate data. CCTV cameras, all of these things generate data. And so having devices that can act on that data from the data center, from the large language model, or whatever other model that you've actually implemented at that end to be able to take those actionable actions, taking that action on that data is important. So that data gravity becomes one of the, the key measurements here at the edge. And, and I'm a, an absolute uh, proponent of edge, edge devices or endpoint execution. Th this won't work unless we do that. So I just wonder, uh, Sin, so if you take the case of banks, they need speed and accuracy. This is a question we get asked quite often. If you deploy your LLMs on the edge, would it perform the same way as in the cloud? Well, you're not necessarily deploying an LLM at the edge. You're taking that action, but but you hit a, a very, very good point. Data, gravity, data's heavy, significantly in um, our current CIO playbook. So Lenovo, IDC, 
we surveyed CIOs in Asia Pacific for their input on certain questions. The biggest challenge this year in the 2025 survey is data, data management. We talk about actioning data where it's, where it is or where it's made, where it was sourced. If you centralize everything in the data center, and it's important to do certain things in the data center. If you centralize that, you have latency problems. If you can do that at the edge with high performance edge devices, you cut that latency, you increase the speed. Accuracy, slightly different topic. Accuracy comes from the old school, which is garbage in, garbage out. How one manages that data, that this data management piece then becomes important. It's part of this sort of start slow to go fast methodology that we, we have across Lenovo as it relates to AI. We always pitch the story of, hey, start small, scale fast. Mm. And in the AI environments or agentic architecture uh, conversations, the speed of implementation is, has a direct correlation to the success of that project. And especially in financial services institutions is when they have legacy and regulatory issues. And I was just wondering, in your, in your work across the different industries, how do you see companies overcoming these hurdles? Because legacy infrastructure is friction for an agentic system. I guess your, your term is the longer the project, the uglier it is. So this is start slow to go fast sort of thought, methodology, whatever you want to do. Even take out AI out of it. The foundation of any project starts really with understanding the endpoint needs to be. When you then take it back to an AI position is the data piece. So working to find the foundations of the data, where is the data sourced? how our data scientists will use that unstructured data. All of those things become important. There's no shortcuts to that. That's the go slow. Think of it as an iterative process that you can sort of build out over the, over, over the years, and then you look at it as a vertical conversation, and then you take the conversation forward. Is there a way for a bank or financial institutions where they have legacy stuff, but they can adopt these newer technologies without a complete infrastructure overhaul? The legacy aspects in banks, that will probably be there for a long, long time, right? And yeah. it's, it's legacy for a reason, and it will continue to be a reason. Utilizing that data from the legacy infrastructure, which is most of the time now behind an internal firewall, becomes part of that foundational pan, the governance, and everything else on the top. That allows that push into the end point, the edge infrastructure to be able to use that data for whatever use case yeah. it needs to be. That is an absolute. We do a lot of POCs, but very few of them go to production. What have you seen in your experience working with different companies? Even if we go back a number of years, it's that fail fast mentality that really everybody is doing today because AI is a differentiator for a lot of organizations. Before it was about FOMO, fear of missing out. Now it's about how can I use AI to add value to the business, to increase efficiency, to increase profitability, to make life better for my clients, to make life better for my employees? How does it add business value? As opposed to, well, my friend Frank, the CEO, and I'm a CEO, well, he's got five AIs. Bill, I need six AIs. It doesn't happen anymore. Again, it comes back to, you know, when, when you're dealing with a vendor, a partner. A few years ago, we could talk about, let's say, productivity gains. This is something that we're working on and looking at banks and saying, hey, how do we make your downstream processes more productive, organizational efficiency? We could commit to, let's say, 30%, and even then that would be a little bit of a stretch in terms of productivity. But now with the agentic architecture, we're able to say, hey, look, we can get you to 60. We can get you to a 98% compliance. Of course, with parameters, but you can confidently say it because you have a human in the loop architecture built in and you know where the stresses are. And it's changed the world in a significant way, I think. I agree. I think you, you, you just said human in the loop. When you look at things like agentic and building an agentic model in a highly regulated environment, healthcare, banking, you name it, there needs to be those checks and balances. A human needs to be in the loop at some point. All of these things need to be checked constantly. I know people call it artificial intelligence. I never have. I've always called it augmented intelligence because there's always a human there. And the beauty of that process is that on the adoption side of things, the change management journey is a, is a lot easier to get into because you're not completely overhauling your workflows. You have an agentic system that wraps around what you currently have. And that's a lot easier to put in motion versus looking at a system to say, hey, now you've got to work differently with something. You know, it was ChatGPT, it was LLM. Yeah. 
I'm going to get somebody to do my CV, check my grammar, do whatever it is. Agentic is the thing. We'll all say it's the holy grail to get to an agentic AI. And then there'll be something after that, of course. But right now, that's the, the holy grail is effectively, a, I'm going to say, a semi-thinking machine. Not a conscious system, but a thinking machine within parameters or a thinking within limits. That's the Star Trek journey that we've all been looking for. Once Agentic is more front of office and taking day-to-day, -day, not responsibility, but taking day-to-day -day help, assistance, and other things, I think you'll see humanity free itself a little bit of the mundane to be able to do either things we love to do, be passionate about, and grow that. That's where this will go. I'm really excited about the future from that perspective. The evolution from centralized cloud to distributed edge architecture in banking applications, this has really helped the regulatory requirements for banks. It's been quite fantastic because you can say, hey, data sovereignty, you don't always have to have a sovereign cloud. Your data's, data's on premise with you, and, and that's a great thing. But when you look at global institutions, especially when they have, when they're in different jurisdictions, in different countries, how does, in an edge scenario, how does that regulation work, especially in that distributed juris jurisdiction? Realistically, um, banks are multinationals. They're in multiple countries, as you said. Each one of those countries probably has different sets of governance, compliance, trust regulations that each of those particular countries need to comply with. What I would press upon any bank, any multinational, is to look for partner and a vendor who have branches everywhere or offices around the world, we're there. So we understand also those regulatory compliance issues and what needs to be done. Looking for a vendor who works where they work, who lives where they live, becomes an important consideration, I think, when you look at partnership. And it sounds all contrite, but it's not. After 37 years in this industry and working all over the world, it's not a contrite statement at all. I've seen clients fail abysmally because they've gone with a local provider and, and don't understand. As you said, speed of deployment is one of those key metrics today for the CIOs. So if you were advising a financial services CEO on an agentic strategy that would remain relevant at least for the next two years, how would you get them to think about it? I would start with one of the things that I started with during our chat today which is start slow to go fast. That fast piece allows for longevity. Most institutions, a lot are coming into six and seven years, they're sweating their assets. These are expensive systems. They're not cheap, but they derive value for the business. So it doesn't matter how much they cost. Building the foundation, that cement layer, becomes incredibly important. The governance, the compliance, the trust. Data scientists who are working out where the data is, how am I gonna cut that data? How am I going to tokenize it? What, what am I going to do with that data? It's starting slow to go fast and it's going slow to survive. Constant change management on the data model allows you to eke the best performance as well. The sufficiency drive that you want out of the technology that you have in the data center allows you to stretch that technology further. I mean, in the AI age today, use cases can change on a dime. So you as an organization can't have millions upon millions of dollars invested in a, in a model that is solid. We need to change it. So Sin, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. I had an absolute hoot. Thanks for having me, Binder. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. And thank you for joining us for this episode and see you in the next episode.